Guys, as you know, C5 and C6 Corvettes have proven themselves to be extremely reliable. That having been said, if yours starts to have a problem, one that sets a check engine light, then an engine miss is one of the more common issues that tends to pop up from time to time. And at the end of the day, we typically find that one cylinder ends up being the culprit. So let's go ahead and walk through the steps that I like to take to diagnose the more common causes of cylinder misfire issues. Stale gas can absolutely cause all sorts of issues. No one knows for sure exactly how long it takes for your gas to become stale. It depends on the original quality of the fuel, the average storage temperature, cooler is better, and how well it is sealed from absorbing moisture. If your fuel is six months to a year old, you may want to try a fresh tank to see if this resolves your issue. I would strongly consider draining and replacing fuel that is more than a year and a half old. First, go ahead and grab a scan tool. Even one as cheap as this $25 Ansel will work just fine. If you don't have one, you can go to your local auto parts store and more likely than not, they'll let you borrow one for a few minutes so you can go ahead and pull that code right in their parking lot. If in fact you have a misfire going on, it's more than likely going to be one or more of the following codes. P0300, which is random multiple cylinder misfire. This can be caused by a number of things, including something like a large vacuum leak, which can cause one or more cylinders to randomly misfire. More likely than the P0300 code, you'll get a code that is the same, but it replaces that last digit zero with a number that represents the specific cylinder that's misfiring. Yes, the computer is that damn smart. By using inputs from the crankshaft position sensor and the camshaft position sensor, the computer can tell which cylinder isn't firing when it should be. And if this is the case, you'll typically pull up one of these codes. Less common, but absolutely possible for a cylinder misfire issue, you might pull up the code P03500 which means there's something wrong with the primary or the secondary circuit of one of the engine's eight ignition coils. Just like the P0300 cylinder misfire codes, the P0350 can point to a specific cylinder as well by substituting that last number zero by the number of the specific cylinder that's got an issue. All right, so let's proceed and go ahead with the steps that I like to take to diagnose cylinder misfire issues. Now remember, these are the diagnostic trouble codes P0300 all the way through P0308. The first thing I like to do, believe it or not, is check each spark plug wire to make sure it's properly snapped onto the spark plug and that the other end is properly snapped into the coil. Yes guys, sometimes the cause of an engine miss can absolutely be this easy. Assuming that wasn't the problem, the next thing I like to do is just a good quick inspection of all the spark plug wires to see if I can find any obvious signs of damage or deterioration. If you find any deterioration, simply replace the spark plug wire and see if that fixes the issue. If all of the spark plug wires seem to be okay, I like to turn the shop lights down and with the engine running, Take a look and see if there's any signs of arcing anywhere near the spark plug wires or where they meet the spark plugs or the ignition coils. I also like to take a spray bottle and give the area around the wires a very fine mist of water that'll help encourage arcing that might be a little bit shy now that I happen to be watching. If this reveals any arcing, go ahead and replace the defective part, which will probably be a defective spark plug wire or a cracked spark plug. If I still haven't found the miss, I like to stop and ask myself the following question. While I was watching the engine run earlier and observing it miss, was the miss consistent? As in, was it happening every single time? And was it following a repeating pattern or rhythm? If it is missing occasionally and randomly and for no apparent reason, you may want to consider replacing the spark plugs and wires, especially if it's been several years and they're due for a change anyway. Sometimes you'll just get lucky and by replacing an overdue maintenance item, you'll also take care of your drivability issue. Now that's killing two birds with one stone. Now to be crystal clear, please do not replace ignition coils thinking you're taking care of a maintenance item because you're really just throwing away money. GM ignition coils have a reputation for being very reliable and they live a long time. And besides, we'll do some coil diagnostics in just a bit. If you went ahead and replaced the plugs and wires and you're still getting kind of a random occasional miss and you have a P0300 code, 
then I would suspect something like a vacuum leak, which you could check for with your scan tool because you'd have extremely positive fuel trims like somewhere around 20% or higher and your primary oxygen sensor voltage on bank one and two would both be stuck well below 450 millivolts. Also, you could have a low fuel pressure issue, but if it was bad enough that you're getting a lean idle miss, once you put the car in gear and give it a little gas to go somewhere, it would be missing really bad or perhaps even die altogether. Now let's say when you were listening for your miss, it was in fact consistent and predictable. And when you pulled the trouble codes, you got a code P0306, which means cylinder number six misfire. Again, here's how cylinders are numbered for LS engines. So in our case, cylinder number six is the second one from the firewall on the passenger side. Let's go ahead and make sure we're getting spark at cylinder number six as we should. Now you probably have a spare spark plug lying around. So let's go ahead and remove the spark plug wire carefully from the spark plug on the engine. And then we'll connect it to our spare spark plug and then lay it on the engine and go ahead and start it for just a few seconds to check for spark. If yours checks out fine as well, go ahead and pull the spark plug and look at it for signs of fouling or cracks on the insulator, or maybe the gap is too wide. Even if you don't see anything obvious, we've got to rule out this spark plug as being the culprit. To do this, I would suggest installing a new spark plug because they are cheap and see if this resolves your issue. If you do have a scan tool handy, then go ahead and clear the codes remove the plug and swap it with another cylinder, and then go ahead and run the engine again. And if the code follows the suspected spark plug to the cylinder that we installed it into, then we know that spark plug is our culprit. And if that's the case, go ahead and replace the spark plug. And if the rest of the spark plugs are due or you and the owner don't know how old they are, then go ahead and replace all of the spark plugs. What about if when we did the coil and spare spark plug spark test, you had no spark at all or a very faint spark. Well, first make sure where you laid the spark plug down had sufficient ground. If that checks out okay, then you most likely have a bad coil or the connector that connects the harness to the coil is loose, corroded, or otherwise damaged, or the wiring that connects the coil to the computer or PCM has a short or a break, or lastly and least likely, you've got a damaged PCM. To test for a bad coil, you could absolutely pull out a multimeter and do some testing. But for the purposes of this video, we're simply gonna swap coil number six with coil number four, and then restart the engine and see if the old swaparoo fixes our issue or not. If it does, before you go out and buy a new coil, double check the connector between the wiring harness and the coil, because sometimes, just simply unplugging and replugging that connector is enough to reestablish continuity. So you're looking very closely to make sure there's no corrosion, damage, or the female portion of the plug is not too loose, which doesn't allow for proper contact. If swapping your coils between cylinder number six and cylinder number four didn't fix your issue and the plug connector from the harness at number six checks out to be okay, then you likely have some sort of a wiring short or break between the coil and the computer or a bad computer. Now I'm not gonna go into full detail as to how to do this, but just know it's not rocket science. All you're really doing is looking for a break in the wire or a short in the wire between the coil and the computer. You can look at the wire and identify the color code and trace it back to the PCM, or you can look online and find a wiring diagram, which is very helpful. I have had to trace wires back from the component to the computer many times in the past. It does take a little bit of time, but if you're methodical about it and take your time, it's doable. And if you do find a frayed or broken wire, go ahead and make the repair and then give yourself a high five because you just saved quite a bit of money. Now let's go ahead and switch gears. Let's say you've got a noticeable miss, you pulled the codes and you've got a P0306. And based on all the testing we've done so far, we've ruled out Spark as being the issue. What next? Well, that's gonna depend on what tools you've got in your arsenal. And if you don't already have a compression gauge in your toolbox, it's a mouse click away and for 20 bucks, you can get one 
that'll work for our purposes. So if one of your cylinders has a broken piston ring or rings that are just worn too far or valves that aren't sealing properly or even a broken valve spring, that will lead to low compression and that can absolutely cause a miss. So let's test it. There are many different opinions as to which method is the exact best way to check for an engine's compression. But one thing's for sure, whichever method you use, you've got to make sure you follow the exact same procedure for each and every cylinder or your results are going to be flawed because most methods have us declare any cylinder bad or questionable if its compression is 10% or lower than the majority of the cylinders. For our purpose, which is to determine if the compression in cylinder number six is abnormally low, we're going to take the hose that comes with our compression gauge, we're going to remove the spark plug from cylinder number six, and then we're going to screw this end in to the cylinder head hand tight. Then making sure the battery has a good normal charge, I'm going to hold my foot all the way to the floor with the accelerator pedal and try starting the engine for three seconds and then I'll stop it. Holding your foot all the way to the floor during the entire test, not 97% of the way to the floor, not 99% of the way to the floor, but 100% to the floor puts the computer in clear flood mode and prevents the engine from actually starting. Pretty cool, huh? So now let's go ahead and test cylinder number six. So this number looks fairly normal to me, but it doesn't tell us for sure. So let's test two more cylinders at random to make sure that our compression on cylinder number six is not more than 10% less than the other two cylinders. Oh, and the cylinders that you test at random, pick ones that are easy to get at. If it turned out that cylinder number six is 10% or more lower than the other two cylinders, again, you could have a broken piston ring, worn piston rings, a valve that's not sealing, or hopefully a broken valve spring that didn't damage anything else, and that's causing your low compression. So if yours is low, I would go ahead and pop that valve cover off and inspect those valve springs. One last thing about the compression test. You've got to use some common sense when interpreting your results. If your cylinder number six comes in at 13% lower than the other cylinders. That's a gray area and it may or may not be your problem. But if your results come in at 50% less compression for cylinder number six versus the other two you checked on, then it's definitely your problem. Moving on, let's say you've tried every single test that we've talked about so far and they've all passed, but you still have a pesky miss at cylinder number six. What else could it be? Well, it could be a bad fuel injector or something to do with the wiring to the fuel injector or the connector. Let's find out. Using a multimeter, let's go ahead and check the electrical part of the fuel injector. Go ahead and set the ohm setting to 200 and then we'll connect the leads to the fuel injector on cylinder number six and see what ohm reading we get. Then we'll pick two other cylinders at random and check their ohm rating as well. We're looking on the C6 for a value of around 12 ohms. Your application might be different, but if you test three of them and cylinder number six is drastically different, that's probably your issue. If the injector's resistance looks good, go ahead and install a Noid light onto the injector connector Start the engine and make sure it flashes to confirm you have good power and ground control. If the electrical side of the fuel injector tests out okay, now we've got to start suspecting a clogged or partially clogged fuel injector, so we'll have to test that. But before we go down this path, it's a good idea to just throw on a fuel pressure gauge and check the fuel pressure to make sure it's normal. To do this, we hook up a fuel pressure gauge to the fuel rail and then we cycle the ignition and observe the fuel pressure. If your fuel pressure tests out okay, now we're gonna proceed with testing for a clogged or partially clogged fuel injector, and there's the easy way, and there's the hard way. The hard way isn't all that terribly hard, it just takes a little time. Make sure everything is really clean, remove your fuel injector rail, and then take the fuel injector from cylinder number six and swap it with cylinder number four. Put everything back together, clear the codes, and then run the Corvette long enough to see if it sets another code. If that code follows the suspected bad injector from number six to cylinder number four, 
then we know we found our issue. And that means you're gonna have to have the injector cleaned or replaced. The easy way to find out if you've got a clogged or partially clogged fuel injector is to use the affordable AutoFix D1 Lite to do a fuel injector balance test. And the best thing about this test is that it's super easy. The second best thing is you don't even have to touch one of your fuel injectors. Here's how the test is done. Step one is to hook up a fuel pressure gauge to the fuel rail on either the C5 or the C6. Then using my Autel powered AutoFix D1 Lite scan tool, I start the injector test. First, it cycles the fuel pump on so that it builds to a maximum fuel pressure and then stabilizes and we'll record this first number. Then it cycles the first injector, a certain number of pulses and it drops the fuel pressure in the rail and we record the ending pressure value. Then we go on and complete the same test for all of the remaining cylinders. After we've completed testing all eight injectors, we compare the beginning and ending value of pressure for each of the fuel injectors, and ideally they're gonna be the same or within just a percent or two. And if so, they've passed the test. If one or two injectors lose very little pressure compared to the rest of the injectors, then we know that that cylinder is running lean and more investigation is in order. So guys, if you follow this comprehensive guide, the next time you have an engine miss in your C5 or your C6, Chances are you'll be able to find the issue and solve it, you'll save a bunch of money, and you'll get the satisfaction of doing it yourself. If I happen to have missed your favorite DIY test for finding engine misses, leave it in the comments below because like you, I'm always trying to up my game as well. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up, consider subscribing, and most of all, thanks for watching.